Hello goat lovers, Crystal here with Blue Cactus Dairy Goats and today we're going to go over section B of the ADGA official show rules and then we're going to go in the house and I'm going to make an awesome spring soap with you guys. Hey guys, just a quick reminder, it's 28 days till our first due date, so make sure you're subscribed because you don't want to miss all the baby goats. Alright guys, so today we are going over section B of the ADGA show rules um, and that section is show sanctioning and fees. So fees is obviously uh, pretty pretty easy to figure out what fees are. Um, show sanctioning just means that ADGA did approve the show rules that a club committee organization sent in for approval. Alright, so here we go. And Boo apparently wants to help today, don't you Boo? Do what you got. All right. Number one in section B is all show rules from association must be exactly what was set in for approval for ADGA to sanction and must state ADGA rules shall govern. Now, all that means is you have to send in what rules you set up for your show that you want to put on. Um, and ADGA has to approve them, they have to get these rules, and they have to abide by all guidelines. Um, and on your rules, they do have to say, ADGA rules shall govern. So number two, um, you do have to send in two copies of all the GOAT classes to ADGA. Now, I'll take a second here just to let you know what a class is. That is literally just an age group of the breed of GOAT. So, say, um, one-year-old under two, two-year-old under three, the, um, and so forth. So again, you have to send in two copies of all the GOAT classes, um, all other rules of the association, or say club um, that, that is requesting to put on this show, and official show application has to be sent in for approval. So all of these things need to be sent in, and again, two copies of the rules and two copies of the classes. And number three. If there are any changes to the show that has already been approved, um, it must be requested in writing from ADGA. So if you send in your show rules to ADGA and ADGA says, yep, it's sanctioned, they're good to go, and now all of a sudden you want to change some rules, um, you do have to send that in in writing to ADGA for approval um, unless, let's see, if it is a change in the judge, the show chairperson, or the show secretary, it can be handled with a call if necessary. So like if you're on a strict time frame or something, you need a judge, the show's about to take place in a week, um, you can definitely handle that over the phone. Okay, so number four is, and no later than two weeks in advance to the show, ADGA will send um, the approved show rules to the judge. So in other words, at least two weeks in advance, the ADGA office has to send the official rules to the judge so that they can look them over and just be well versed in what those rules for that particular show are and be ready for it. Okay, so number five is a little bit lengthy in this section um, and it goes over the fees and so forth, but the postmark date on the envelope uh, determines the cost of the application if two copies of the rules in classes and the cost of the rosettes. Uh, these are rosettes, these are the ribbons that you win. Um, and the cost of the rosettes and full cost of application were included. Um, if anything with the application was incomplete, then the last date of communication is going to determine the cost. So if you send in all of that stuff um, in 30 days, more than 30 days in advance, um, it is a $40 fee. If it is 30 to 11 days in advance to the show, uh, it is an $80 fee. And anything 10 days or less is going to be a $120 fee to uh, get that show sanctioned. Now, rosettes are required. So if you're going to put on a show, you want these classes um, sanctioned, you do have to um, buy the rosettes. Which are very pretty, by the way. I love rosettes. I like collecting them. So the rosettes are required and for a set, uh, which is just the grand champion and the reserve grand champion. Reserve grand champion means pretty much second place. Um, so these two are $7 and you do have to buy it per breed. Um, so that is something to take in consideration. And let's see if champion, 
too many papers, boo. So if you do choose to put on a champion challenge, um, then you do have to buy the best of breed ribbon. So I'll give you an example of what the champion challenge is. Um, and it doesn't have to be sanctioned. You don't have to have a champion challenge. But if you do, what that means is you can take a finished champion dough, uh, for instance, May. Um, she doesn't have to go through all the different age groups and, and deal with any of that. She is actually going to go in the ring and she will compete against whoever was chosen as the grand champion. Um, and whoever wins that actually gets the best of breed. So that's a pretty cool win. So an additional $4 must be sent um, if you are doing the champion challenge. If the best in show is being sanctioned, uh, it must be listed under its own class and the rosette must be purchased for four dollars so if you want to sanction the best in show um, I've, I've, I have not come across a show that didn't have the best in show so I'll just explain what that is um, it is literally all the different breeds of goats who won their champion or if there was a champion challenge and then another dope beat that dough then they go in in a lineup so you'll have the nubian the la mancha i know boo i'm talking you'll have the nigerians you'll have all of these different breeds of goats and whoever won the champion and then out of those is going to be the best in show so it's literally the best ribbon that you can uh, walk away with that means your dough was chosen as the absolute best dough there so it's pretty cool i have a few of these and they're pretty awesome to have if you don't sanction best in show class, the rosette can't be purchased. So if you're not gonna sanction it, you do not have an option to even buy that ribbon. And will not go on record as a best in show win, even if the show participates in that round. So if you wanna go through it um, and do, okay, fine, you still did the best in show. If you didn't sanction it, and you didn't have a ribbon that you purchased to, to give out to that winner, um, then it's not going to go on record with ADGA as an official win. Okay, so number six, uh, the base date for figuring out age of an animal is the date of the show, um, unless otherwise stated by whoever puts the show on. Um, so if, if whoever is wanting ADGA to approve the show rules is wanting to go off a different base date um, age-wise, then they would have to put that in the rules and have that approved. Otherwise, it's just the date of the show which makes complete sense. How old is your goat on the date of the show? Okay, so number seven, uh, you can't hold two shows at the same time under one judge. So a lot of times you'll see uh, a couple shows going on at the same time, um, and they're just kind of like Nigerians will be over here and Nubians are being over here, but you have to have two different judges. So you can't have one judge in this ring and then pausing everything and then going back over into another ring and that being officially two shows uh, it can only be one judge in one ring at one time and number eight any show that limits the number of entries has to state it in the rules so in other words if you're like okay we have a small facility we only can um, take on I don't know, 50 entries or 50 people sending in their entries saying they're going to bring goats. That just has to be stated in the rules so that everybody is aware. Um, and that would just pretty much mean like, oh, I better send in my entries and not be last minute. Or you might not get to show. <laughs> what are you doing, boo? Okay, number nine. Good boy. Okay, number nine. Show rule changes approved by the board are effective immediately, except for shows already sanctioned to occur before January 1st of the upcoming year. Um, ADGA will announce sanctioned shows as soon as possible, and all requests not to list the show will be den denied. So in other words, um, ADGA is going to um, put on their website that these are the sanctioned shows, and all requests to list the show, to not list the show, will be denied. And you cannot hide a show from people. If you are going to put on a show, um, anybody is able to um, exhibit and, and come to that show. You can't just kind of keep it secretive and only these people can come. And lastly, number 10 of section B. Boo, he wants some attention. One of these statements must be listed in show rules junior and senior show are separately sanctioned 
or junior and senior shows are not separately sanctioned. Um, now what that means, so the junior is a doe who has not freshened. So in other words, she has not had babies and she has not gotten an udder poodle. I love you. She has not um, freshened and gotten an udder. She hasn't had babies. Um, so that is a junior doe. And she could be up to two years old and still show as a junior, but anything beyond that, and she hasn't got an udder, she's, she's not allowed to show. Um, and a senior doe is just, again, a doe that has freshened. Now, it might be a one-year-old, that might be a two-year-old, uh, it doesn't matter, but as long, if she has freshened and had babies and has an udder, that makes that doe a senior. So, you can sanction a junior show and a senior show separately, uh, just meaning all the juniors are competing against juniors and they aren't competing against the seniors that have udders and, and so forth, um, or you can put them together. Uh, when you do put them together, you know, uh, it's a little bit harder to win, I'd say, for a junior to, to win, obviously up to a senior who has an udder. Um, an udder is a lot of points um, on, on the scorecard and it counts for a lot. So if you're looking at a junior, she may be beautiful and confirmation wise, she, she looks awesome. But until you get to really see that udder, you're not really sure what that doe is made of. So that's all that that simply means. Uh, if they are separately sanctioned or they're not separately sanctioned, it just has to be on the show rules. So that is it, you guys. Um, as far as the sanctioning and fees on the ADGA official rules. So next time it is section C and we're gonna be going over rules governing show officials and judges, which this section I find very interesting. So you guys aren't gonna wanna miss it. Uh, but boo, should we let those does out to browse now? I think he wants to. Let's go let these go now, baby. Come on, boo. Up here. Come on, girls. Let's go. <laughs> you don't usually come in here, huh? No, you protect the perimeter. Oh, that's too cute. It's actually really, really funny because the does don't like most dogs, but they just seem to know that Boo is a guardian. And they're right. They don't mind you at all. How are you girls doing this morning? How's it going? Good morning, Cassie. The girls got let out on new pasture, a new area. So, of course, they go right after these fairy dusters. They seek them out. And they find them quite easily, actually. They're pretty hidden with no leaves on them. But they don't hide from you girls, huh? What we got going on over here, boo? Are you hanging out with Lily? Are you? It's horror. Good morning, Lily. 
You better be nice to Boo. You found a big fairy duster, huh? Yes. Lily is being honored today, huh, Wildy? Jeez Louise. How are you, pretty? She says big and round. Boom, boom, boom. I'm betting five. <laughs> Where are you going, Lady? You girls are on the move today, huh? All those show rules made you hungry. Oh, Mia. I love this little girl. Hi, Bessie. Hi, Bessie. Little fluff ball. All right, we're going to go check out this group of does down here. They have only been on this pasture a couple days. But they love this corner here. And it's because of this Mormon tea that is looking pretty picked through. Ain't that right, girls? Oh, man. You gonna get a nibble, May? How are you today, Mayo? You didn't even say hi this morning. Mayo. Hello, Dai. Oh, look at you. You look so happy. You're a cutie, Lodi. Angry, but cute. Man, Lily. Can you be a little nicer? She's just going through like she's a bowling ball and they're bowling pins. Which is not nice, huh, Mia? She's grouchy today. Lily! Gosh. How are you doing today, Leia? Leia here has always been a bit of a talker, but lately. She's been talking a lot, huh? You just kind of bleating all day. Right now you're pretty good. You got some food in your mouth. Where are you going, girl? Jeez. All right, so the girls are out browsing and it is a lovely day for them. Nice cloud cover, no wind so far, and good temps. So we're gonna let them browse and let's get in the house so we can make some cool soap. All right, you guys, so today we are gonna make a super fun springtime soap. But before we get into that, I just wanted to show you uh, my new and improved jasmine bar, which I am very, very pleased with. So let's see what you guys think. All right, so this was the first one I did, just to remind you guys. Um, and it is just, it is still the jasmine scent, but I went with kind of the white looking flower and a little bit darker green than I had hoped to get. But the new and improved, which again, I am very, very happy with. So the changes, look at that. I absolutely love it. So it's a much more vibrant green um, and then the blue jasmine here. So anyway, it's a, it's a blue jasmine flower instead of the white. And I just think that blue pops in that yellow so much more. And I did take the, take the hanger swirl in and out a little bit more than the first bar, just to give it that kind of, you know, leaves and stem look. So again, just wanted to show you guys that because I am happy, happy with it. So then we're going to have the white jasmine, which I won't be making again, but it's still an excellent bar. Um, and the new and improved blue jasmine, which will be a springtime bar from here on out because I love it. Okay, so back to the bar that we are going to be making today. Um, this one is really fun because you get to get some piping in um, for the topping, but I'll show you. So this is what the bar looks like. And then the top is just flowers. 
So this is called our wildflower bar. Uh, it smells wonderful. There are three different essential oils in this bar and it's fun to make and just gorgeous. So this is another one of our springtime bars that I have been busy trying to make. Uh, that way they're ready in spring in just a few weeks. All right, so as usual, we start with our oils. Um, here we have olive oil, coconut oil, castor oil, and shea butter. And I'm gonna start by putting in our organic essential oils. Now this is a mixture of pine, um, orange, and elong elong. And it might sound a little weird, um, but it does, it smells like you're just walking through a field of wildflowers with the pine trees around you and it's, it's heavenly, it's lovely. So here we go, we're gonna start with the essential oil. And then our beautiful doe's milk. And then we are just gonna get this all mixed up until creamy. good and combined. All right, so I'm gonna get all of this turned into soap because I need five different colors out of it. So we're gonna add the lye and just mix it until combined. Because we gotta mix a lot of the other colors in and we don't want it too thick. perfect. Get my stick blender out of the way just for a second. Okay, as I mentioned, we got four different uh, colors here, and then the batter is going to be yellow. So first, we have purple Brazilian clay. We have the beautiful rose clay. We have our green clay. And then we have our amazing annatto, which is just a tiny bit, uh, but it's going to be a perfect yellow. All right, so we don't need too much of each color. I'm going to do about two cups of the purple, about two cups of the rose clay, just a cup of the green, and one cup of yellow. Perfect. All right, so for now we're gonna push these to the side. And to the rest of the batter, I am going to add 15 drops of annatto. So it gives it a really pretty yellow color. Now, I always shoot for the amount of drops I want, but sometimes one more drop comes out. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That is a notto math. I'm gonna go with it. It just worked out and it's 15. Okay, so what I wanna do is just mix this first. Um, it's gonna be just a light yellow, but I wanna mix this up so that I can pour it into the molds. Um, if it's not so much batter, it'll start hardening up a little bit quicker if I even divvy it out in between the molds. That way, when I'm ready to start piping, it's good and solid. Here we go. Okay, so that is mixed in as far as color is concerned. Um, but I will say I'm going to mix it a little bit longer because, like I said, I do want that um, bottom portion, this portion in the mold, to be a little bit solid by the time I start piping. So I'm going to give it just a little bit longer. Okay, let's 
let's just check that trace. Oh yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that. This is to a good trace, where if you kind of swirl the soap on top, you can see it. You can see it just kind of sitting on the top. So that is perfect. Let's get this in the molds. Okay, we're going for half and half. Just eyeballing it. This smells so good, you guys. We did make this last year, and it was a crowd pleaser. All right, give them a little shake. Move these to the side. Okay, now I'm just gonna start blending up my colors here. We'll start with purple. I did just go to from lightest to darkest. All of these are gonna be pretty light. So with these particular colors, it's not gonna make much of a difference. Here we go. Being careful not to splash myself with any of this soap because it's kind of a shallow container. And also not mixing too much. You see how thick it's getting on me already, guys. just keep mixing it so I'm kind of stirring it here just to get it in there so okay get there one more have um, some tips that way I have a variation of tips that I can use because it's just one tip for these disposable ones um, and when I do that I just use Ziploc bags so here we go I gotta make sure the right tip for the right color okay here we got our rose clay now purple green so these are actually perfect consistency to start piping so what that's telling me is we better move quick okay just one more yellow the yellow is by far the thickest here guys of course the last one I need to use will be all right so just to show you guys it's thickened up pretty good there so it will not fall through this soap as I pipe the flowers on and our first color we're gonna do is green and we're gonna start on the bottom and this is gonna be the petals here I'm just kind of go back and forth choo, 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 choo. Now we're going to start again with the petals on the bottom, but I'm going to try to keep some left over so I can fill in little gaps and also have like green petals on top of, in between the flowers here. Perfect consistency. Okay. 
Good. All right, put that green to the side, and now purple or pink doesn't really matter. So purple is closer to me. I'm going to twist my piping bag, and here we go. Let's see. Flower. Just kind of randomly placing them wherever. So if you cover the leaves, it's okay, or the, yeah, the leaves, sorry. If you cover them, it's okay, because even when you cut it open, you're, you're going to see all the different colors in there, too. So, And like I said, we'll come back and add more green to the top. I don't put too many down on one loaf at first, because I want to make sure each loaf has a good amount of the same color. Because then... I can go back and add a couple if I have extra. Do a little one, a little one. All right, let's go a few more flowers over here. Just pretty. Just enough for one more. Perfect. Okay, now the rose clay. This is really, really such a beautiful color, and I love that this color does not change through the saponification process. It holds true. Okay, so same thing with this color. Just kind of filling in some gaps around here and there. Ideally, each soap cut is going to have a little of every color. especially in like these empty spots. Just little flowers for this one. Okay. Oh, that's so pretty. All right, get over here before I run out. Take a look. Got a little bit left, so we just want to make sure we put it where it looks best. Or any kind of spots where it's missing a little soap or lacking in a yellow flower. pretty good, but I got more soap here. Okay. 
Nice. Okay, so now I'm just gonna top her off so that you can see some of the green petals here and there. Again, any gaps is where I'm looking mainly. Here, one second, let me twist this. Just to put some green on top too. At this point it gets a little bit hard because I still have the soap and I don't want to not use it, but I also don't want to use so much green that it takes away from all the different colors. And right now I'm feeling like it's looking pretty good. So, okay, one more spot right there. I'll probably find another if I sit here and stare long enough. But, I'm calling it quits right now. Okay. I just think that that is such a beautiful soap. So check it out, guys. And that is our beautiful wildflower. It smells so good. It really, really does. And it's fun to make and it's beautiful. But there is one more step that I take for this bar um, because this bar likes to ash and a lot of my bars I don't care if they ash I think it looks really really natural and beautiful but this particular bar I don't want it to ash which is just kind of where it gets the white over it um, from being super cold from soaping with cold oils which I keep my oils really cold so I'm going to put some alcohol over top of it so you just spritz her on just like so. And I'm also gonna do it just a few more times while it's in the cooler box, um, saponifying. So other than that, this soap is all done. So this of course is gonna be six weeks before it's ready, but we have some wildflower that'll just be a few weeks um, and it's gonna be ready for springtime. So lots of spring soaps coming. I'm getting excited for that moment when I can release them. Uh, but until then, we of course have lots and lots of soaps to choose from, something for everybody. And you won't be upset if you get yourself some and try it out. So the link to our Etsy shop is in the description below. But anyway, other than that, you guys, this is it. I'm gonna get these in the cooler box and start making some more soap and we will see you guys again soon. This summer, Blue Cactus Dairy Goats is showing nationwide. Join us as we travel across America. You've watched us raise our goats. You've watched us build our herd. Now watch us compete in 16 different dairy goat shows across the country. See how we stack up against herds from other areas. Of course, this is a team effort, and we could use your help. Join our team by subscribing to our channel. Leave a comment, click the like button, show grandma how to find our videos. If you can, join Patreon. Patrons are invited to meet us at the shows. Blue Cactus Dairy Goats, it's showtime.